Good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm James. I'm a full stack developer here at Trent. I've been working here for about a year and a half. Uh, initially, we started with a REST API. Then we moved to our custom build GraphQL server, which was an interesting choice when there was pretty much no documentation. And now we're moving, or we are, have moved to an Apollo server. So today I'm going to talk through how we went about implementing our auth using schema directives and the strategy pattern. Excuse me. So first things first, who's used GraphQL? Good. And who knows what schema directives are? A couple of people. Strategy pattern? Cool. OK, so hopefully by the end of this, you know what all of those are, and you'll see how they fit together. If not, ask questions at the end. So why do this? So originally, you want a single source for your auth. You don't want it to be wrapped in lots of different functions and resolvers, because it's going to get hard later on down the line, because you get a lot of resolvers. So you don't want to edit those. You want to have a single place where your auth is handled, and so everything's decoupled. And trust me, this is what we did the first time around, and it was a bad idea. So now we've done it the right way around. So it looks a little bit like this when you've sort of done it wrong. So you have an API request come in. This is sort of how GraphQL works. It comes in, it hits your schema. The schema says, OK, I need to resolve to these, this data or these fields. And it will hit your resolvers. Now, one way is to sort of use something like a high order component, if you're familiar with like React and stuff. And you can wrap or curry a function. And you can wrap a resolver with an auth method, which works really well when you have like five or so resolvers. And then you get to 50, 100, or God knows how many Facebook have. But when you get to that number, all of a sudden, if you need to change an argument that goes into that, it's going to be a real pain. So we move to uh, schema directives. And what that looks like is a bit like this. So we moved our auth away from our resolvers. So they're concerned with just getting data. I'll explain what resolver is in a second as well. I'll give an example. And we moved it into a directive. So all of our auth is concerned inside this directive in one place. So when you want to work on that auth, you know, if you need to change that bit of code, you work in that single place. You don't conflict with any resolvers, because if someone's creating a new resolver and you change the auth you know, whilst they're creating that new resolver, they would then have it wrong. But they, they won't in this case, because it's decoupled. So a little example of GraphQL and what this actually results in will look a bit like. Bear with. OK, so on the left, my left, your left, yeah, is a query. We have users. We're affecting users. And for each user, we're saying, please give us a name and whether or not they're banned. On the right is the data that comes back, dummy user, and this person's not banned. Now, basically, I'm going to change this value down here. And we run it. And all of a sudden, band has just become null, because I'm not authorized, because I don't have the permissions required to access that data. Now, just to prove that it's not all happening in the resolvers, I'm going to quickly flip over to our resolvers, which are very complicated. And every time, it returns banned. So this is proving there's no auth in there. It's, this resolve is only concerned with getting data and returning it. So sort of how does that work? That's what I'm going to talk through now. So oh yeah, quick note. So as Simon mentioned, it is authorization, not authentication. Authentication is, just for those of you who don't know, is sort of, let's say you have an ID card. It has a picture of your face and your name, and that proves who you are. Authorization is the fact that that card can get you into a building, into a room, or let you access certain information. So that's the difference. So today, we're going to be talking about authorization, not authentication. So what to do? So with regards to this, we're going to be introducing these three parts here. So we're going to introduce a directive. So when an API request comes in and it resolves to a schema field or an object, we're going to say, is there a directive present? If it is, handle it in this special way, which is then going to do our authorization using a strategy pattern. And then if it's allowed, resolve as usual and give them the data they want. So this, hopefully, is what you'll end up with. So what is a schema directive? This is what it looks like. I stole this from the GraphQL docs. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like. So the key parts are a directive has a name, um, maybe some arguments, and what it can be applied on. So, and basically, if you put a directive onto an object or a field, it just says this needs to be handled in a special manner. So what it looks like 
in a much simpler way is like this. So I've said the directive called auth is going to be applied on objects or on field definitions. So an object is the type user, but a field is name, band, or can post. So and that's a really simple directive, but it doesn't really give us too much more because there's no way of saying what code does that relate to. So what we do is when we build our schema, we're going to say, OK, when you come across, so this is making use of GraphQL tools, and we're going to say for our schema directives, when you come across the auth directive, link it to our class auth directive, which is going to make use of some more GraphQL tools to allow us to implement a strategy pattern every time someone tries to access an object or a field that has that directive on it. So these are the two key uh, methods that are inside auth directive. Not too much from now. I'm going to go through a code example later and show you how they actually work. But these are two things to remember. So when we're building our schema for the very first time, when you create that server, when we visit user, we're going to use this visit object. And when we visit these fields, we're going to use the visit field definitions. And that will allow us to basically implement our strategy. But what about access levels? So I've mentioned we have different roles. And you're almost certainly going to need this at some point because you will have admins, you will have users, you'll have super users, and all sorts of things like that. So you need to make sure that only certain people can access certain data. So that's where we use the strategy pattern. And that is this. So given some context, you pass that context to an abstraction. The abstraction is you can kind of think of it like a switch statement. And you can say, OK, given the context or an access level of admin, I'm going to choose implementation A to determine if you're authorized. Given the context or the access level user, I'm going to choose implementation B. And what that means, again, everything is nicely decoupled because implementation, implementation A, B, C, and whatever else you want, they all do a very specific job. But the abstraction, that can grow as you scale. Most people can add to it. So long as it knows about your specific implementation, all is good and it's going to keep working. But how do we get the context into that strategy from a directive? We make use of directive arguments. So very similar to before, but I've added a new line on the left, which is requires. I'm going to say it's of type role, or it has to be of a type role, uh, which is an enum, which is admin, user, it could be super user, you can add all kinds of things you want in there. And then basically, I'm going to say for the object user, if you want to access this, you have to have been authorized or required the role user. And then for fields, for the banned field, I'm going to say you have to be an admin to see whether a user has been banned or not. So this is how it's going to go through. So what it actually looks like in practice, um, so I'm going to pull up. This is a GitHub repo. I'll post the link. I think it's on the end of this, but I'll also post it in whatever is circulating after this. And we can see here it is in action. So these shout if you can't see this, by the way. OK, so this would be uh, defining my very basic types for my schema. We have a directive. We're saying there's an auth directive, as I've gone through before. I've simplified the user a little bit to say it has name and band. And if you want to access band, you still have to have the admin role. Uh, and then I've got a query, users, So, which you saw. This is the same thing you make, saw me make earlier. So when we go down to here, so these roles, uh, resolvers, these are, this is this thing you saw earlier. So nothing special going on here, no sort of auth or anything like that. But this is the important part where we say, when you come across this directive called auth, make use of our class auth directive. So this is where the functions I showed earlier come about. So when we visit that type user, it's going to say, OK, I want you to make sure that this has been wrapped. And if you visit any fields within that, I want you to make sure that that field is also wrapped. So we grab the argument requires and say this is the role or the context for the strategy that this is going to require. So for example, this would be user or admin. And then the insures field is wrapped. We go down here. And we say for each of the fields in this type, so for example, the object field, it's just going to be object. But for the multiple fields inside it, it's going to go through all of those. And it's going to say, right, what role does someone require to actually access this information? So it's going to grab that, and then based on that, maybe given some request data as well, so you can make use of headers in your API requests and stuff like that, you're going to execute the strategy. And that takes us down here, where we can say, based on the role given in, execute the strategy for that role, give it this data. And a small example is for the admin role. 
with a very secret secret. And you can see, so what it does, if I pass in the admin, uh, so if we go back to here, so if this role is admin, it is going to make use of this admin method. It's going to say, right, grab the authorization header. Does it match our secret? If it does, return true. All is good. If it doesn't, return false. And then if it doesn't match, throw an error showing you're not authorized, which is what we saw on one of these desktops over here. So you saw that not authorized message. So that is effectively it all together. Cool. OK, well, thank you very much for listening. And uh, hopefully it helps.